G'day viewers, and after a brief hiatus because I've been on the road having a jolly good time, I'm back with Totally Fucked Up Friday, because I had a great holiday, but the world's still totally fucked up. I'm going to start off with a pop quiz this week. We're going to see how good you would be at law enforcement. Now imagine you're in a cybercrime division, whether it's in the police force, you know, federal agency, whatever, you're responsible for cybercrime. Now you arrest a guy who has been involved in cybercrime since he was 12. You catch him in his early 20s, he has been uh, hacking, doing all sorts of crap since he was 12. It's what he does, compulsively. And you've now found out he's been cybercriming to the extent of, you know, stealing millions of dollars. Then you decide to use him as an informant. Let's not send him to jail. Let's get him to inform on all the other cyber criminals. Where do you think this is going to end up? Is it A, he's a paragon of virtue for the rest of his life and deals blows to evildoers? B, he gets knocked off by someone he informed in? C, he keeps committing crimes because he's a fucking criminal! This is the case with Albert Gonzalez, who's just been given the longest sentence for cybercrime in US history. It's 20 years or more he's going to be away, uh, and he's been responsible for either directly or helping people to just steal millions upon millions of dollars. Apparently, he even had a barrel buried in his parents' backyard that had 1.2 million in cash, and that was just his. The naivety of the law enforcement in this stuns me. Like They're surprised that he was like effectively a double agent. Uh, I'll link you to an article. It's quite long. It's very interesting. One money quote in particular. And as you go, oh yeah, like, I knew. Like, he was like an expert on social engineering and deception. But I never got the impression he was lying to us. That's how social engineering works, you idiots! If you know he's lying to you, he doesn't get anywhere! My god, some of these people are just so totally fucked up! And revisiting one of my favourite totally fucked up topics, ACTA, the Anti-Copyright Trade Agreement, being negotiated in secret by non-elected people from different countries around the world. They're paid for by industry lobbyists! Anyway, there had actually been one or two pieces of good news around ACTA recently. The biggest one was they seemed to have dumped the three strikes provision, which meant if, say, a record company made three claims against you for breaching copyright, that's claims, not cases proved in court, three claims and your entire household would be cut off from the internet. That's fair, isn't it? Uh, and that seemed to have been dumped, but now some of the amendments that seem to have been pushed by the EU, the European Union, have done scary shit with trademark, which is even more airy-fairy than copyright. Now, this is looking like ISPs might be responsible for enforcing trademark claims. So if you write something on the blog or use a picture that some company claims infringes their trademark, the ISP could be compelled to take it down without any proof, without any sort of court process to see whether you really did infr infringe trademark. This is coming from the EU. The people who are making it a serious crime to call a sparkling white wine champagne, unless it comes from the Champagne region of France. Or they want to stop people referring to Parmesan cheese, unless it's cheese that comes from Parma. I have to admit, the funniest uh, knock-on from that I've ever seen, a cheap brand in a supermarket of Parmesan light cheese, but they couldn't call it Parmesan, and so it was called Grated Italian. That poor Italian, who put him through a grater? That's totally fucked up. And let's finish with a visit to the wonderful wacky world of religious intolerance. Now I've gone on record a couple of times of saying anti-Muslim hysteria is bullshit. Yes, there are absolute fucking nutbags out there preaching murder and war in what they call the name of Islam. But they're not the majority, they're a tiny minority. I love, and the anti-Muslim bigots will always change their arguments. They say, they're all violent. Dude, there's a billion of them. If they all wanted you dead, 
you'd be fucking dead. But, in a fantastic case of, this is why people are bigoted against Muslims. Stories come to light uh, that a Christian woman living in Pakistan has had a death sentence handed down to her for blasphemy. Yes, she's had a death sentence pronounced because she said, well, Islam's crap and, you know, Muhammad shag donkeys or something similar. The point being, you should be allowed to say whatever the fuck you want. You might not get a lot of friends doing it and you might get vilified. But the idea that a court of law would pronounce a death sentence just because she said, you know what, your religion is fucking bollocks. That is just an offence against humanity. Now, the most rational treatment of the case I could find was on CNN, and they had someone who pointed out that these death sentences are almost never carried out. Uh, a higher court says, OK, um, we're not going to actually put you to death. You know what? That's not the problem. The problem... It's not the problem that uh, a death sentence doesn't get carried out. It's a problem that anyone anywhere in the world thinks they can pronounce a death sentence for someone on someone for what they said. You know, whether they said Muhammad was a pedophile who fucks donkeys, whether they said Jesus had a thing for fish that was really not the standard fisherman type of thing, whether they said Buddha was a fat fuck with a smug expression on his face, I just want to smack right off. Fuck those Buddhists and their inner peace. I hate them. Ugh. And of course, by the way, if you now read any stories about Melbourne being attacked by a plague of locusts or huge storms, that's clearly my fault for saying those things like, the concept of God is fucking fictional. Anyone who wants to pronounce any sort of violent judgment on anyone for making a political statement, a religious statement, hell, if you think I'm obnoxious, don't listen to me. But don't think that you can control what people say or think. Good. Good.